anyway as i said let us come to one very important special conclusion of this so called multiplication principle and that is as follows let us look at what happens when we put omega equal to 0 so we have x 1 to n with t t f t is x 1 to omega and we know that x 1 n times x 2 n if it does have a d t f t it would be essentially 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi x 1 lambda x 2 omega minus lambda d lambda. Now, let us in particular take x 2 complex conjugate n, you see. So, if x 2 n has the d t f t capital x 2 omega, what is the d t f t of x 2 complex conjugate n? We know what it is. It is x 2 minus omega complex conjugate. And therefore, if you choose not to multiply x 1 and x 2, but x 1 and x 2 conjugate, what do we have? x 1 n x 2 complex conjugate n would have the d t f t 1 by 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi x 1 lambda. Now, here you would have to write x 2 omega minus lambda, but it would be lambda minus omega complex conjugate d lambda, because you reverse or you change the sign of the argument and you also complex conjugate. Is that correct? Now, in particular look at the consequence of this for omega equal to 0. look at the consequence of this at omega equal to 0. It says that the d t f t of x 1 n x 2 complex conjugate n evaluated at omega equal to 0 is 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi x 1 lambda x 2 lambda complex conjugate d lambda. Is not that true? Because in this expression, all you are doing is putting omega equal to 0. Now, we have a very, very interesting statement. What indeed, what, what do you mean by the DTFT of x 1, x 2 complex conjugate evaluated at omega equal to 0? The DTFT of x 1 n x 2 complex conjugate n evaluated at omega equal to 0 is simply summation n going from minus to plus infinity x 1 n x 2 complex conjugate n e raise the power minus j 0 n which is summation x 1 x 2 complex conjugate over all n. And this is known to us, we are familiar with this. This is our familiar inner product of the sequences x 1 and x 2. It is a very interesting result. Why so interesting? Let us put them down together, then we will see why it is so beautiful. We are saying summation n going from minus to plus infinity x 1 n x 2 n complex conjugate is 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi capital x 1 lambda capital x 2 lambda complex conjugate d lambda. Now, notice the
the similarity in these two sides, the left hand and the right hand side. Similarity in spirit, if not exactly in expression. What do I mean by the similarity in spirit? Look at the left hand side. On the left hand side, we are saying multiply corresponding samples, but of course, the second one is complex conjugated and add over all such samples. On the right hand side, we are saying multiply corresponding points on the frequency axis, but the second point is complex conjugated. On the left hand side, because we are dealing with a discrete independent variable, we are saying add. On the right hand side, because we are dealing with a continuous independent variable, we are saying integrate. On the left hand side, because we are dealing with an independent variable, which runs all the way from minus to plus infinity, we are saying add from minus to plus infinity. On the right hand side, because we are dealing with periodic functions or the discrete time Fourier transform, we are integrating only over the principal period. But on both sides, we are multiplying corresponding components or corresponding points on the two functions. The second one is complex conjugated and we are integrating on the right hand side and adding on the left, we are putting them together, we are putting together all such sums. In other words, we are bringing out an equivalence between two inner products. And now, we need to reflect for a moment on this. In fact, we shall, we have seen something very interesting in this lecture and we shall dwell more on this as we begin the next lecture. Thank you.